Hello everyone. In this video, we will be taking a look at the Fourier analysis of a single phase full wave controlled rectifier. So let's get started. Fourier analysis is primarily used to convert a periodic function in terms of sine and cosine. So this is the fundamental purpose of using Fourier analysis. So any periodic function can be converted to sine and cosine. So why do we need Fourier analysis in our circuit? So let us consider an RL load with a full wave control rectifier circuit. We had previously seen the waveforms, isn't it? So one thing that we did not look at is the source current waveform, but we have a periodic square wave. If we again try to understand the operation, this is the waveform that we will be getting. So the amplitude for this is I0 and minus I0 over here. And the time period is nothing but, this is nothing but alpha, this is pi plus alpha, and this is 2 pi plus alpha. So we will be finding this or we will be converting this from a periodic signal to sine and cosine. So that is why we will be using a Fourier analysis. And why is that required? That is required for harmonic analysis. When I say harmonic analysis, there are a lot of parameters that you have to find out like the RMS value, the total harmonic distortion and the average value. So in order to do that, we will be requiring the Fourier analysis. So you know what is Fourier analysis and why is it required? Now let us see how to do that, right? So let us go into the analysis part. So fundamentally, the Fourier analysis, we are doing it for the source current. So IS of T, from the fundamental definition, we can write IS of T as A0 plus summation of N is equal to one to infinity we are writing in terms of cos and sin. That is a n cos n omega t plus b n sin n omega t. Let us call this as equation one. This i s of t can be rewritten as a naught is nothing but the DC component that is amplitude we saw i naught, isn't it? Plus summation of n is equal to 1 to infinity, we have Cn sine of n omega t plus theta n. We can rewrite 1 in this particular fashion where we will call this as 2 and Cn is nothing but square root of a n square plus b n square. And what is theta n? Theta n is nothing but tan inverse of a n by b n. So let us consider a triangle theta n, a n, b n, c n. This is based on this. So now you might ask me a question as how did we get or how did we write 1 from 1 to 2, right? So 1 can be written as 2 is what I mentioned, but how do we say this is correct? So let us back calculate and find is 2 correct or 1 can be written in terms of 2. So to justify that, let us again simplify this expression. I s of t is equal to I out plus summation of n is equal to 1 to infinity C n. This is nothing but sine of a plus b, isn't it? Sine of a plus b can be written as sine a cos b plus cos a sine b, isn't it? So sine of n omega t into cos theta n plus cos of n omega t into sin theta n. Now cos theta n is nothing but, if you carefully observe this triangle, it is cos theta is basically bn by cn, isn't it? So we have this is bn by cn. And what is sin theta n? Sin theta n is nothing but an by cn, isn't it? It is an by cn. So what is sin theta n? It is nothing but a n by c n. So when we are substituting cos theta n as b n by c n and sin theta n as a n by c n in this equation, and when we are simplifying, we will get back 2. That is why 1 can be written in terms of 2. Now throughout our analysis, we will be considering equation number 2 to simplify this expressions. 
So in this equation two, what are the factors or parameters that we need to find? We need to find I out. We need to find CN that is nothing but AN and BN. We are also supposed to find out theta N and then it will be easy for us to substitute. So let us start with what is required. So as I mentioned, we will be requiring I out. So I out is nothing but one by the total time period that is two pi in this case alpha 2 pi plus alpha i out d omega t minus so we had seen the limits right for the source current waveform so the same thing is what we will be considering over here so we had seen alpha 2 pi plus alpha and pi plus alpha to 2 pi plus alpha i out was positive for some time and i out was negative for some time isn't it that is what we are considering over here and this term will be equal to zero if we are further simplifying it so I out is equal to zero. That means this component will be zero. Now let us focus on the next component. That is we need to find out what is an. So an is given by one by time period. That is pi. Again, let us consider alpha to pi plus alpha. An is nothing but it is associated with the cos cosine of the component, right? So I, I naught into cos n omega t into d omega t minus pi plus alpha to 2 pi plus alpha I naught. Again, I naught add positive and negative, isn't it? That is why we will add the positive and then subtract with the negative component. Cos n omega t into d omega t. Now, when we are further simplifying this particular expression, we will be getting minus 4 times I naught by n pi sin n alpha for n is equal to 1, 3 and 5 and it is equal to 0 for n is equal to 2, 4 and 6. For even components, an is equal to 0. For odd components, it is given by this particular equation. Now, what is left out? We have to find out bn. So, let's continue. Now, how do we find out bn? bn is associated with the sine component, isn't it? So, bn is associated with sine component. bn is equal to, again, 1 by time period, that is 1 by pi. We will be considering alpha to pi plus alpha i naught sin n omega t into d omega t minus pi plus alpha to 2 pi plus alpha i naught sin n omega t into d omega t just like the way we did for b a n so further simplifying this expression we will be getting 4 times i out by n pi cos n alpha this is for n is odd 1 3 5 and bn will be equal to 0 for n becoming equal to even quantities that is 2 4 6 and so on So now what is CN? CN is nothing but we know that let us change the color of the ink. So CN is nothing but square root of AN square plus BN square. Isn't it? We had considered this in the previous case, isn't it? So considering the same thing that is AN square we will be considering only for the odd quantities when you are substituting that is 4 i naught by n pi cos alpha whole square cos n alpha whole square and 4 i naught by n pi sin n alpha whole square you will be getting cn to be equal to 4 times i naught by n pi now the only thing that we need to find out is theta n so theta n again we knew that theta n is nothing but tan inverse of tan inverse of an by bn isn't it so 
we know a n and we know b n when we are substituting we will be getting tan inverse of minus tan n alpha so that is tan inverse of minus tan n alpha so theta n will be equal to minus n alpha in this case so we have found out all the quantities that are required for our analysis isn't it so now let us write the final expression that is is of t what we have found out we had made a note of the equation 2 isn't it is of t now substituting all the values that we have got that is n is equal to 1 to infinity you will be having 4 times i naught by n pi into sine of n omega t minus n alpha very very important expression let us call this expression to be equal to equation a so based on this equation we will be determining a lot of parameters so what are those parameters let us look so the first and foremost important thing is what is the maximum value of nth harmonic source current nth harmonic source current that is denoted as ISNM ISNM is nothing but if you carefully observe it is nothing but this quantity because maximum occurs when this complete quantity becomes equal to 1 isn't it so the maximum value of the nth harmonic source current is nothing but 4 times i out by n pi in this what is the rms value of nth harmonic source current rms value of nth harmonic source current we can represent it as isnr and that is equal to isnm that is the maximum value of nth harmonic source current divided by root 2 so you will be rewriting this we can rewrite this as substituting isnm over here in this equation you will be getting 2 root 2 i naught by n pi so this is the first important observation so they might directly give you a question to find out the maximum value of n nth harmonic source current or maximum rms value of the source current so right away so you need to directly substitute this formula and they would have given you the value of i naught or you might have to find out based on the circuit i hope this point is clear now let's move on what is the second component that we are supposed to find out it is nothing but the rms value of fundamental source current and we will denote this as is1 and what is is1 is1 we will be substituting from the previous equation that is 2 root 2 i naught by n pi when we are substituting n is equal to 1 you will be left out with 2 root 2 i naught by pi you will be getting that has to be equal to 0.9 times i naught so this is the rms value of fundamental component of source current for a full fully controlled rectifier circuit now what is the displacement angle the displacement angle the displacement angle is denoted as phi of n so phi of n is equal to minus n alpha this is the displacement angle that we are seeing isn't it if you carefully observe that is nothing but the displacement angle now let's look at the fourth factor that we need to consider that is nothing but the displacement factor previously we had seen displacement angle and now we will be looking at the displacement factor The displacement factor is denoted as dfn dfn is nothing but cos of n alpha cos of the displacement angle you will be getting the displacement factor cos of minus theta is cos theta as a result i am considering only 
So if they ask you the fundamental displacement factor that you have to substitute n is equal to 1 and that will be cos alpha. Now let us look at the fifth important factor that is nothing but the input power factor. Input power factor. Input power factor is given as the ratio of IS1 that is the fundamental component by the normal component. So we had previously fi find out these values, isn't it? That is IS1 and IS and all these things. So you, when you substitute all these values, you will be getting 0.9 times cos alpha. So this is the input power factor. Now the next thing is, what is the current distortion factor? The current distortion factor is given as the ratio of IS1 by IS. So that is nothing but 0.9 again. We know these values, isn't it? Now the next important factor that we are going to consider is the total harmonic distortion. What is the total harmonic distortion? Equal to the square root of IS square minus the fundamental component IS1 square by IS1 square. Again, when we are substituting and simplifying this particular expression, you will be getting THD to be equal to 48.43. That is nothing but 48.3%. If someone asks you what is the total harmonic distortion of a fully controlled rectifier, that is nothing but 48.43%. Let's take a look at the eighth important parameter, that is active power input. Active power input is given as Pi is equal to V out into I out. These are nothing but the average values. What is V out and I out? It is the average values. And the next factor is the reactive power input. Reactive power input is given as minus V out I out into tan alpha. So we can represent that as QI, that is V out and I out can be written as PI, isn't it? That is in terms of active power. So reactive power is equal to act minus of active power to into tan alpha. So this is the reactive power input. So based on these equations that we have considered in this analysis, they can give you n number of problems and it is just a simple substitution if you know how to analyze it. So I hope this video gave you a clear understanding on how to perform Fourier analysis of a single phase fully controlled rectifier. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.